Welcome to Read the Bible with me, with Steve Hernandez. Me, I'm Steve Hernandez. Happy New Year, huh? 2022? It's going to be a good one, right? I don't think so. (laughs) We will see. We will see. Thank you so much for listening. Please subscribe at YouTube, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. And then, of course, subscribe to our Patreon, where we give you a ton of content every week, including my uh, comedy interview podcast, uh, Put It In My Mouth. And then go hard oh, Al, Al Capone, Capone. <laughs> with a super producer, Gerardo, over there. Hello. How's it going, everyone? He tells a story. He talks about comedy. It's pretty good. <laughs> uh, you'll you'll have a great time listening to that. But uh, five bucks a month gets you access to all content. $20 a month means you're a supporter. We keep getting more every week. Thank you so much for that. We really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to rate and, re- rate and review on Apple Podcasts. Rate and review us. We're at 31 reviews now. Okay, we gotta we gotta have a new goal. I'm gonna set a goal like of maybe a hundred, uh, maybe a hundred by my birthday. That's in four months. I know that sounds like a lot, but it's not that much. Not if you really appreciate us, if you really love us. A hundred uh, by his birthday, and he'll do a podcast shirtless. <laughs> it just, does anyone want to see? It's too Bert Kreischer, you know. <laughs> I used to take off my shirt, too, all the time. I still do sometimes, but <laughs> Burt Kreischer just, like, trademarked that so hard. I just feel like such a wannabe. <laughs> um, it's still, for us, just a few days after Christmas. I had a big COVID scare. I worked on Thursday with my boss, and he came down with COVID the next day, so Julie and I just shut it down for many days. And uh, we were supposed to do our podcast on Monday with the guests that we're having next week, probably. Um, and then I got a, uh, I got the lab results back, and I was negative, and I called up Gerardo. He's down here the next fucking day. <laughs> How was your Christmas, Gerardo? It was great, dude. I had a lot of uh, family time, obviously. Yeah. A lot of drunken family. Yeah. A lot of, uh, you know, updates on the divorce, if you will. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, who's, who's, uh, the, who's getting a divorce? One, one of my, let's say, uncles or aunts got okay. a divorce. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and I felt bad because my mom told me that she's coming. He yeah. or she is coming. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I, uh, she said like she's gonna go to uh, her gram or like the kids are going to the grandmas. Yeah, and I should have made you know one on one together because my grandma's dead. You know, yes. And so um, I asked her when she got there. I was like, "Where are the kids? Can you like short small talk? You know what I mean?" Yeah. And she was uh, you know swinging around the pasola, <laughs> and she's like, "They're with their dad." <laughs> <laughs> How long were they together for? Oh, years, dude. Oh, man. That's I remember rough. I was 13 years old in a Hawaiian shirt going to their wedding in Mexico, dude. Oh, man. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's a long time. My parents were together only, I'm going to say only now because the, now that I'm older, I'm like, oh, I guess that wasn't that long. They were together for 18 years, which is probably about as long as this couple was together, right? Yeah. And it's so crazy that that's not that long. My dad was mm. younger than me when he got a divorce. Yeah. He was 28. At when he was 28 years old, he owned a home and had four kids, mm-hmm. and uh, we're doing podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm old, it's yeah. over for me. I, I was just thinking, I mean, it's not over, I'm living a great life, but um, I was just thinking about that. I was like, dude, there's no, and I'm still trying to figure out life <laughs> that you don't understand. Even yesterday, Julie and I were sick for our ba- and we, that's a crazy thing, too, is we were feeling sick, my throat, yeah. my head, all this stuff. But we just kept testing negative, but we just for five days were mainlining TV for like 12 hours at a time, just fucking TV, like eating trash, <laughs> just like fu- just like having a great time with each other. But um, when you say mainlining, were you catching up or were you starting new things? Starting new things. Old. Oh. I mean, I, uh, I got a showtime. So we're going episode to episode to episode, <laughs> like not in a row, but from like if four shows, if we're watching four shows. We're like watching an episode of each just back to back. You know what I mean? Just like whoo, hopping over to HBO, <laughs> watching, going to Amazon Prime. Just like, wow, all over the place. I'm like a DJ, like with TV shows, <laughs> just trying to get all these fucking shows in. Um, but the whole time thinking just like about my life and what it means and my values. And I'm always thinking about this stuff. And I think that just comes from, you can think about it as long as you don't have kids, mm-hmm. right? Because as soon as you have kids, you got to be like, who cares? Yeah. I'm, I got to work. Got to mm-hmm. provide for these kids. So I don't, I just don't think I was for a walk today. I just don't, I can't see how I can in this political and uh, ecological climate. I don't see how I could like, ha- and because I, I want to be an artist. I can't see how I'm going to have a kid. Yeah. I just can't <laughs> shut off that part of my brain Yeah, where I'm going to be like, Oh, it's fine. 
Mm -hmm. Because I don't think it's fine. Yeah. Uh, Just like I don't think Christianity's fine or I don't think monogamy's fine. I I feel like I'm just, I've clicked out of the thing in such a way where I'm like, yeah, I just don't buy it anymore, which is kind of a bummer. I don't know what came first, the chicken or the egg, you know, like did kids needing censorship come first or like artists hating kids? You know what I mean? Kids needing censorship. What are you talking? What are you talking so about? So mostly like like uh, what's her name? Janet Jackson's nipple coming yeah, out. Yeah. It was during the family hour where kids could see it, yeah. and it changed a lot of rules for the FCC or whatever yeah. that thing is called. It's not the FCC, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's okay. absolutely. The FCC. Okay. I thought that was like the, <laughs> the airline thing, <laughs> but you know that happened because kids could see it during the the yeah. family hour. Yeah, and uh, it changed a lot of things for artists in like the radio realm, which is now podcasting. But what came first, artists? <laughs> It's never the kids. Don't bring it up. It's these (laughs) fucking liars. Yeah. It's people lying. Mm -hmm. Just like, you know, when I talk about monogamy, you, I know you. So I know that I think there are people who are just supposed to be monogamous. There are people who I don't think you're going to ever cheat on whoever you're with. Yeah. I don't think you have it in you if you're not drinking. I think (laughs) if you're you're drinking, you're just being chaotic anyways. You know what I mean? But uh, as long as you're sober. I don't see any like realm where you're going to ever cheat on your person. Mm -hmm. But most of America is not like that. 50, 60, 70% of people say they're hardcore monogamous. uh, But what they are is they'll either lie and cheat or they're serial monogamous, meaning they'll, after some years, they'll break up with the person they're with and then get with somebody else. But that's not like really monogamy. That's just, you know, cashing in and forget it like that. So I don't buy into that. Um, That's polyamorous by the textbook. You know what I mean? Well, it's it's not. It's definitely not polyamory, <laughs> but it's non-monogamy. Yeah. It's not being with one. Things used to be. You used to be with one person for fifty years, mm. and now it's like one. Well, now people believe. Oh, I'm just as long as I'm with this person, I'm just with this person. But they don't feel any particular. I think pull to be with somebody like for the rest of their life anymore, and that's because women are making more money. That's because people used to be, you used to depend on the person. Like, I, I'm i going to be poor. I, I can't make money. Women couldn't get bank accounts in 1975. Like, truly. Yeah. So they needed a husband. But now they don't need a husband like that. Um, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, Drew. Yeah, well, we started with the divorce. And that was, honestly, if you're asking how my Christmas went, yeah. that was the highlight of my Christmas. <laughs> just that interaction. Well, yeah, and now the only reason I would really want to have a baby, and this is true, and uh, is because I would like to for Julia to stay in my life. Her yeah. and I talked about this the other day. So even if we broke up, I would like to always have this thing that we share that we're going to see each other. Like, you're going to stay in my life no matter what with this thing. And she said, that's why I want one too. And I was like... That doesn't seem right to me. (laughs) But maybe it's as right as anything. So, I don't know. We'll see. Just uh, debating uh, my Christmas break and then thinking about this new year and then thinking about um, always what kind of art do I want to make and uh, what kind of person do I want to be and what does it mean to be a good person. Uh, And that's always changing. Um, So that's boring and that's sad, but that's the case. What question did you want to ask me? Oh, I wanted to ask you about, speaking of polyamory and monogamy and stuff. So um, the the title of the podcast is Read the Bible with Me with Steve Hernandez. Yeah. So why do you stick to that title? Um, I I stick to that title because I want the option to be able to read the Bible. Yeah. Um, And that's the first thing, that's, that's the name we came up with. And it doesn't make sense to change it, really. I mean... Does it make sense to change it? I think so. Just because naturally you're, let's say, like you're streamlining just polyamory information and whatnot. Yeah. And bullshit, if you ask me, but just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, and then also exploring the LGBTQ yeah. side type of personalities that come here. Yeah. And mo- mostly people that you're around at all times. Yeah. But I don't see how the Bible fits into that. And well, as far as being like the title of the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm going to keep interviewing different people, different things and different people. I, uh, I, I think I just view the world through this Christian lens, despite whether or not I, I can, uh, help it or not. This is always how I'm going to view the world because it was indoctrinated into me. Yeah. And so, um, cause I feel like the Bible includes three things that everyone hates. Yeah. Reading. Yeah. Right. The Bible. Yeah. And then also being taught something, read the Bible with me. Yeah. You know? Well, I think people don't know the Bible. Yeah. So... I think when people don't, when they don't like a thing out of ignorance or because they're, I mean, Western civilization is built on um, 
I believe on on Homer, the Odyssey, and the Iliad, and the Bible. Mm-hmm. Those three things. What we know of Western civilization is built on those things, and most people don't know any of that stuff at all. They know why they believe these things. Like monogamy is a lot of uh, it's because of the Bible, and uh, so I want to continue to challenge those things and to read this stuff. Because people don't know the Bible at all. <laughs> and and yet they believe in God. They quote unquote believe in God. They believe in Jesus. So, I mean, I don't care if people hear the title and they think, oh, that's stupid. Because to me, the things we talk about, I think, are interesting. Our guests are interesting. And uh, I think our listeners are probably more interesting than, I mean, what other, what name? Do you got any ideas? Yeah, you know, in light of the new year, I got a couple ideas for you. Let me hear them. Uh, what about, okay, the Bible is gay. Yeah. No. <laughs> you said, yeah, way too fast. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what about this? Anything but the Bible. Um, but I want to read the Bible. No, I know. Anything but the Bible, it doesn't even make sense. It's kind of like sarcastic. It's like, hey. Well, I just read the Bible with me sarcastic, too. <laughs> Go on. But it's antagonistic. If you, what is? Read the Bible with me. It's not antagonistic. <laughs> I think it is. No, if people hear that. I'm down, like, if, if people don't like to be challenged or something like that. I, I mean, I guess the only, my only thing is the only thing you could really call it would be, like, something like the Steve Hernandez show or something like that, <laughs> yeah. where I, then I could just, that includes reading the Bible sometimes and stuff, too. But to me, I, I think read the Bible with me is subversive. Um, and, yeah, that's just, to me, it's it remains subversive. Yeah. And so... Uh, a lot of dumb people might not like it because they don't like the Bible, but uh, I'm here for everybody else. Anybody, <laughs> if you follow me on online or if you see my comedy or you follow my socials, I would think that would be an interesting title then where you'd be like, yeah. what the fuck are they talking about? But I don't I don't think I care necessarily about getting dumb people. It's to, funny because I don't know if the audience knows this, but yeah. we have always feuded about titles for things. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, this wasn't a, you didn't feud with me about this title. Oh, no, but we've feuded in the past over titles. Oh, because I your name, the first name of yours and Josh, uh, uh, Josh's podcast was just stupid. It didn't make any sense. And uh, what was the name of that podcast? It originally was, okay, so let me tell the story. So we used to meet up for. <laughs> Just tell them the f- name of the original name of the podcast. But it's so funny what you did. Yeah. We met for AA every Thursday before the open mic at the Chatterbox. Yeah. And this one time, we, me and Josh decided that we're going to start a podcast, and we thought of a name, Josh Rado Mike Alarcons. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again for them to hear. Josh Rado Mike Alarcons. So it's both of their names put first and last names put together. <laughs> Say it again, George. Josh Rado, my color cons. Why would anybody <laughs> remember that name? It's hard to say. It's hard to pronounce. But no. you went from an upsitting position, yeah. right, to laying down on one of the seats of the chatterbox because we were like, and as you were like in agonizing pain over the name, <laughs> yeah. I continued to tell myself like, this is the perfect name if he's feeling this yeah, way about yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't, yeah. That, but my name, I feel like, is subversive. Yeah. Josh Rado, I say it again. <laughs> Josh Rado, my color cons. That's not subversive. <laughs> That's just complicated for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. So to me, I'm like, I do want to read the Bible. I do want to talk shit. I would love to take down the evangelical Christian church. And so for me, that would be that. I, th- I think you could come up maybe with a better name. The Bible of Steve Fernandez. Um, wow, dude. I just blew your mind. <sighs> I mean, and if you want to, we could read it. The Bible with the Bible of Steve Hernandez is a little closer. That's the closest thing. But, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll think about it. If I hear a better name, I'm always down to change. Because you're in a sea full of bullshit, dude. Yeah. You're, you're in a sea full of people actually trying to read the Bible. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, yeah. I I know that too. But I'm not. I mean, like I said, if nobody's just looking, if somebody's looking at the title, especially the clips you published, Gerardo, yeah. if someone reads that and they're like, oh yeah, these guys are evangelical Christians. <laughs> if someone is, because you keep trying to like shoot for the dumbest, which is TikTok, yeah. is 12 year olds, <laughs> the dumbest people, that's just not what I'm trying to do. The dumbest people who couldn't look at that clip and be like, oh yeah, this guy must be a born again Christian. If you're that stupid... <laughs> I don't want you to listen to my fucking podcast. <laughs> there, I said it. I mean, even that. Do you do you know when I think about comedy all the time, Gerardo, which I do, and I do think about how big do I want my audience to be and all that kind of stuff. And the people who are the most successful are going after the biggest piece of pie. Mm-hmm. 
I think the I think America is uh, in it, in and of itself. I think it is a racist, misogynistic, uh, transphobic. So all these horrible things. And if I could be those things, even joking around, <laughs> I could be a wildly successful comedian. Mm-hmm. But I've got this thing in me that wants to be a, a good person and be a comedian. And it's terribly hard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you have to, I think about everything. You have to be thoughtful about everything. And uh, I don't know if it's possible um, because I, I think a lot of like lefty, for lack of a better term, liberal comedy is atrocious. We're going to watch a clip a little bit from <laughs> Sex in the City where it's atrocious. I'm yeah. not trying to do that. If you see my stand-up, I don't think you would think I'm trying to do that. But I do know even in the podcast realm, you know, if I were to become a conservative, if I were to, to be doing that way, you know, I can make a ton of money quick. Um, and this is the last thing I'll say about the title. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah. go on to the, the clips. Yeah. In my opinion, I believe that it's not you really taking the bait you know, as far as changing the name of the podcast. Yeah. I believe that it's a way for you to reach more people because I believe you're very talented. Yeah. And those people that you could be reaching, whether their intelligence is out of the question. I, yeah. You know, I, I fucking DM a lot of people that send me the stupidest shit of all time. <laughs> you know what I mean? I get, dude, if you fucking follow me on TikTok, stop sending me videos. It's annoying. I don't watch any of them. Yeah. You know, um, but it's for whatever reason, you you kind of just become a part of people's lives regardless of their intelligence. Yeah. And that's all you're really asked to do. You're not really asked to be at the same level as them, you know? Yes. Um, but if you're telling me that you think read the Bible with me with Steve Fernandez and then the Bible of Steve Fernandez would make yes. that much of a difference. Um, and also keep in mind, read the Bible with me. That's what the name was for however long. That's yeah. like, that's what that remains. Yeah. But what I'm concerned about is like, and I think it's an interesting point. It's like discussion. If you guys want to join us in the comments. Yeah. Uh, because that first visual of what you see. Yeah. It's just not interesting to me. Yes. To you. Meaning I, I you know, I have a mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I came up with a great name. Just right on my collar cons. Yeah. yeah like, <laughs> I'm yeah, a visionary. I mean that that's the, but it would be, it's, I, it would be interesting to me. Yes. That's the problem. Yeah. Um, but I don't have any real success either. So, um, you know, like I said, I'm open to it. The Bible of Steve Hernandez, I, I might be open to that too. Because dude, imagine the, the, the shirt saying the Bible of Steve Hernandez rather than read the Bible with me. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't, that's a, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good name. I'm not, uh, I'm not automatically opposed to it. And then that does keep. That, that does, I think, stay with the theme of what the podcast is trying to do, too. Because yeah. we could also have the Bible. And through my lens, we could talk about things that are important to me. Yeah. And this, the, they all fall into that that name. So I'm not opposed to that name. I just got a boner, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, then, it, the, you guys, if you don't know Gerardo, it's not much, but it's, <laughs> it's hard. It's not much, but it's hard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not much but it's all I've got um, but yeah I yeah, you know I, like I said I'm I'm open to that me and my friends in, in college yeah we had this one character yeah where uh, let's picture like an old black lady working at a sperm donor yeah right and uh, she walks into the room. She's like, all right, take your pants down and then the guy has a micro dick and she goes, oh baby that's a micro penis and he gets sad and then she goes we can work with that <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know. I mean, I don't want to keep talking about this because we're you know doing a live podcast. But True. Yes. I, I don't. I don't. I just don't know if it would make that much of a difference. Mm. But maybe it will. The only way you could see. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, so you wanted to show me this clip. I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Well, I don't know if you guys watch the new <laughs> Sex in the City. I'm a big uh, Sex in the City fan. Um, it's called, uh, what's it called? Can you look it up while I'm explaining the thing? Sex in the Bible, dude. Another uh-huh. good name. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, um, the new Sex in the City. You told me earlier it was, um, what is it called? What's the new Sex in the City? Let's new see. Sex in the City. And just like that. Oh, it's, and just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've loved Sex in the City for a long time. I, um, <laughs> when I lived with my buddy Steve Spade, when we all both worked at TGI Fridays, I would come home from work and he would always have a little plate of cocaine and uh, 
when we on cable they were releasing one season at a time of Sex in the City. I think this is probably during the fifth or sixth seasons, but we were catching up. So each month we would watch a whole season. We just do cocaine together and like pass it back and forth to each other and be like, <laughs> "Is she gonna get with Big? You know, is she gonna get with Aiden? Like all that kind of shit. Just fucking hype with all that." And uh, Steve Spade, great guy. I still love him. He's a, a bartender at Northwoods, and he just texted me the other day. Uh, good guy. He would never do that much. He would always get cocaine, and he, he'd only do a couple lines. It would put him to sleep for some reason, but he would go leave it in this little drawer. So I'd come home from work. And you guys don't think this is sweet. You don't, you've never done cocaine. <laughs> but uh, I would come home from work sometimes, and there'd be a little drawer, a little pile of cocaine for me, and I'd be like... What the sweetest guy. Like, that's so nice. I'd always be drunk, so that was like a nice thing. But thank you, Steve Spade. So I love Sex in the City. It came back, uh, and just like that, it's back. I don't know if you saw it, but the first episode, uh, they kill Mr. Big. <laughs> so Mr. Big dies on a Peloton. <laughs> if you don't know anything about Sex in the City, you don't know what I'm talking about at all. But uh, Mr. Big with Carrie were back and forth in the movie. They called off their wedding. He said, I, I can't do it. And she, she gets she starts weeping in the street. And Charlotte goes like, get away. Leave her alone. Like it's this whole thing. Dude, you got to watch Sex in the City. First episode, they kill Mr. Big. And so I had this shirt made. I'm going to pull it out right when I watch the episode. So I made this shirt, RIP Mr. Big. <laughs> Get it made right away, like right when the episode's ending. I know this shit's going to be a hit with the internet. That week, though, the guy, his name's Christopher Noth, the guy who plays Mr. Big, <laughs> gets like several sexual assault, straight up rape allegations. <laughs> Jesus Not Christ. Yet. This ain't Louis Fall. This ain't like, this ain't Jeff Ross molesting anyone. He gets like straight up rape accusations. So everybody drops him. Uh, his agency drops his managers. He's done. He's cooked. And But a lot of this stuff happened so long ago. Nothing's going to happen to him like mm. with the cops or anything. But he's just fucking cooked. So I'm stuck with his fucking shirt now. <laughs> it has a double meaning now, dude. That's what people were saying in the comments. I posted it on the internet and people were like, no, it still works. He's dead to everybody. I'm like, yeah, I guess so too. I I'm telling you all this though to say that um, <laughs> they introduce on the first episode, they introduced this um, non binary queer character by the name of Che and they're like a, a Latin X um, <laughs> they're, I mean you're about to see who Che is the Latin X like stand up comic and um, Carrie Bradshaw the, the main character has this podcast with uh, her and a Bobby Lee character to them and a Bobby Lee character and uh, you know I, I'm just it's hilarious but then in the third episode Che the non-binary queer comic uh, is taping a Netflix special. <laughs> this came out like last week and there's a five minute chunk. So Carrie Bradshaw goes, oh, come with me to Chase stand up special Netflix taping. And so there's this five minute chunk and it's uh, it was probably some of the worst stand up <laughs> I've ever seen. But uh, Twitter was aflame with all this stuff. But I haven't seen anyone really watch the clip. So I wanted Gerardo to see this. He does. He's not sex in the yeah, fan I at all. See this. But uh, I wanted to. So we're going to be stopping a lot because uh, this isn't too different than a lot of what I like to call lyric Hyperion comedy right here. <laughs> so this is a lot of like you get a lot of clapter where you're trying to teach people lessons. So as, as bad as there's like a lot of racist or hate-filled or misogynist comedy, there's the other side of, of it too, where you get someone like this character uh, to do stand-up just like this. These are both awful forms of stand-up. Uh, and here's the clip from Che from uh, and uh, whatever the new Sex in the City fucking thing is, but you're going to love this story. Let's watch it. And that's that. Yeah. Ah! Oh, yeah, so I've dated a lot in my life. I've dated men. I've dated <laughs> women. Yeah. <laughs> I've dated men who actually know how to please a woman. He was nice. That's a joke. Um, I've dated pretty much everyone in here. Shit, if I fucked you. <laughs> So pause it real quick. Yeah. Uh, one of the things we're going to be doing, you'll notice with this kind of clapter comedy, is that 
there won't be punchlines. It's a lot of premises. It's a lot of stuff to get people to cheer or boo and stuff. So this is very authentic to this kind of comedy in many ways. Uh, I don't think a person like this would have a Netflix special, but I could be wrong. But if you hear me say that's a joke, it's because there's so few punchlines in this <laughs> where there's a setup and then here's the punch. Um, that was a joke, though. Even It's not a good joke, but it, it's to say uh, I've dated men and then even men that please me. That's, you know, some people will laugh at that. Okay. Here we go. Yeah. Cheer if you fuck me. <laughs> Cheer if you want me to fuck you. I mean, what, did they hone this in the open mics? I don't know. Now, that's Charlotte. Pause it. I don't know if you, you heard what Charlotte said, but she said, you said when, uh, you know, it was going to be a show, there'd actually be seats or something like that. Nobody's taping a special without chairs, folks. <laughs> <laughs> this seems like a small deal or something like that, but it's not that small of a deal. If you're at a special, you're not going to make these fucking people stand up for an hour yeah. or something like that because they're not relaxing. They're just thinking about standing up the whole time. It would never happen. Yeah. These people obviously don't have any stand-up experience. The only okay. person that does stand-up with people standing is yeah. Jesus Christ, dude. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> No idea how to process gender individuality. And that is because every time we are represented in mainstream media, we have to be from some other galaxy, right? <laughs> or like some super skinny model, or like uh, an ethereal magical elf with an ethereal magical elf septum nose ring. Oh, and check it out. When we are earthbound, I'll pause it real quick. we are... <laughs> okay, so those three things, these are all premises. Yeah. So, um, you know, if she would have said... Um, or they would have said a uh, magic elf. Then you do the act out of something of a magic elf. Yeah. Uh, if they would have said, you know, a, a space galaxy thing, then you come up with the space galaxy character and you do that. That would have been a joke. <laughs> right now we just got three different premises. No joke. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we are, are always, always at a murder, murder scene. scene. Never at a birthday party. Oh, and there's always only one of us. Never with a friend. Just one sad non-binary character. Or just one sad trans character. Just wandering. I'm so sad and alone. Still no joke. I'm so sad. Look, it's okay to be sad and alone, all right? There's plenty to be sad about, but I have got news for those motherfuckers. I'm not always sad. <laughs> <laughs> Not a joke in that whole... That was a minute and a half, so no joke. Ooh, look at that cutie pie right there. You see oh, the gold yeah, skirt or whatever? Yeah. yeah, praise God. Okay, go on. <laughs> and I'm not always alone. I have community. I have allies. I have friends. Lots of <laughs> Community, allies, and friends. Put our real asses on TV, okay? All right? Shakes her butt. Their butt. Like, hot when we get home. How am I explain this to my kids? I can explain this to my doorman. You're missing me. I think the world can handle it. And I know this because my own family handled it. Half Mexican, half Irish, all Catholic. That oh, is, shit. That is a lot of rice and beads. Pause it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about this joke for so long. Uh, they said, I'm Mexican and Irish, all Catholic. That's a lot of rice and beads. So the rice and beads covers the Mexican and the Catholicism, but not the Irish yeah. at all. So you've got to say something like oh, rice and potatoes. Yeah, Mexicans love potatoes, dude. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm just saying. Have you ever had quesado? Yes, it's delicious. I'm just saying they don't cover the Irish at all. Yeah. So they bring up the Irish, uh, and they don't mention it. you got to bring up potatoes <laughs> if you're, or beans and potatoes. I don't know. Hey, it's not my job to make it funny. I didn't come up with the fucking premise. All right. <laughs> is, is she going to bring up Latinx at all? No, I don't think that they are. I don't think it's like that. Kind oh, of they. A, it's my yeah, bad. That's all right. The Thanksgiving I came out to my family, I stood up in the living room and I was like, family, <laughs> I love you. <laughs> and I just want you to know that I am queer <laughs> and non-binary. Oh. And bisexual. Snapping from the crowd. Snapping. <laughs> and they were like, that's nice. Can you move? You're blocking the game. <laughs> move. 
That's a, see, that's a joke. Yeah. I don't know how funny you think it is or whatever. That doesn't matter. That's a joke. Um, I've heard that joke a thousand times or whatever where they say I'm gay and then the family goes like, yeah, no shit or something like that, <laughs> yeah. which is basically what, what this joke is. But that is a joke. So, okay. Here we go. Oh, shit, that's it? I set aside four hours for this, but okay. All right. <laughs> Seriously, I fucking lucked out with my family, dudes. My family fucking loves me. Loves me. She's about to cry. Charlotte's crying because uh, she has a non-binary daughter. Oh, okay. <laughs> and just because my family loves me does not mean that they're not confused. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am like an episode of Unsolved Mysteries. They're so confused. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think we all are we'll these days. Yeah. Right then you're supposed to say it's not like they're not still confused and then you're supposed to tell a story about how your family's confused about it. Yeah. That would be a joke. Mm -hmm. That would be like, oh, okay, great joke. <laughs> they're not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, he, she, they, them, oh, please tell me which box to check. <laughs> but you know what I say? I say better to be confused than to be sure. Because, right? <laughs> <laughs> I love how Meredith was. I, I mean, Miranda is like, she's going to agree with this thought, but she's like thinking about, like, uh, I don't know if that's true. <laughs> uh, it's better to be confused than to be sure. Uh, and then um, Che goes on to see, because when you're sure, then nothing can change. Okay, I'm pausing. Right. When you're sure, then nothing can change. And we all have something we need to change. I mean, some of us have something we really need to change. And so change. Do it. Change it. Change it. Shut up. You're not happy with who you are? Step out of that box and change it. Change. Nothing funny. Change your, so funny. Change your job. Change your, change your mind. Change your gender. Change your shirt. No, really, man. Change your shirt. Banana Republic hasn't sold that shirt in like five Ugh. years. I just want to say to all those people out there who are so fucking sure, all those people who make TV and who write for newspapers and magazines and who run news shows, and everyone who wants us to be alone and sad, I just want to say, suck my dick. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I don't have a dick. If I did, I would have had the special five years ago. Good night. Drops the mic. Drops the mic. Oh my and God. the end thing was a joke, you know, to say if they were a man, they would have had the special. All right, you can pause it. Uh, that's rough, right? Yeah. But I mean, it's not like on online on Twitter, everybody was making fun of that fucking clip anyway. So it's not like there was anybody saying like great stand up. Uh, it's hard. There, there's not very good representation of stand up ever uh, on TV or movies. Yeah. The best is Dave Chappelle in that Nutty Professor. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought about that. You know, the Chape does bring up a good point. I've thought about that. That it's better to be confused than sure. I think that's not a true statement. I don't like the word confused, mm -hmm. but uh, unsure than sure in some things. I I think maybe. And you know, I have a clip. Let's go to this clip that kind of addresses. Um, kind of what i believe they were talking about in that uh go to the city lights church one do you have that one um is it, it's not the matthew mcconaughey one it's right? the one after matthew mcconaughey okay, yes uh go to this one and then i i think that's what they're talking about because I, I wanted to talk about this <laughs> stuff too so let's go to that clip and let's watch that clip this this is uh from city lights church his name's pastor uh J Jabin Chavez. Jabin. Uh, what is it? You think it's Yabin? Uh, where is his name? Yabin Chavez. It's J A B I N Chavez out of Las Vegas. I can't tell. I don't know how to pronounce that. Maybe Yabin? Yabin, yeah. Let's go to that clip, though. And I, I think that's kind of what the character Che was talking about. Check this clip. If you want to know the will of God, know the word of God. Because the word of God is truth, and the word of God is God's will. And if you, if you will saturate yourself in the word, you'll always know God's will. See, Jesus said it like this. He said, he said don't worry about what to say when you need to speak. The Holy Spirit will give you the word. Here's what, he, here's what he's saying. If you'll be saturated in the word, you'll know what to say. I'll go further. You'll know what business deals to sign. Yes. You'll know what house to buy. You'll yeah. know what school to send your kids to. You'll know who to marry. You'll know who to date. You'll know who to be friends with. 
if you'll fill yourself with truth, you'll have this knowing in your knower. <laughs> well, that's not in the Bible, but I've lived it for 20 years. You'll have a knowing in your knower. Watch this. They're trouble. <laughs> She's poison. That's not the house. Yep, that's the school. That's the business partner. The fuck? Nope, that's not the person. Nope, we don't need to hang with them again. You'll know it by the Holy Spirit because you're so saturated in truth. If you so, want to know the will of God. So do you see how dangerous that thinking is? Yes. Is that they, and you know, I know Christians like this, is, is that you believe if you read your Bible enough, yeah. then you'll know what everything that's right and everything that's wrong. So, you know, as much as I bagged on that Che clip from Sex in the City, that I believe that's what they were trying to say, is that it's better to be confused than to be for for sure 100% sure. Yeah. Uh, I don't like being confused. <laughs> yeah. I think in the, like, if you kind of like shorten it up, it's just better to be open-minded. Uh, yes. And, uh, you know, always challenging yourself and that, that kind of stuff. But, but this is not evangelical, Christ, evangelical Christianity and the people who are religious, mm -hmm. uh, zealots, um, they always, they are so uncomfortable with not knowing. Yeah. They are so uncomfortable with, I don't know. That's why our parents are super religious. That's why our country claims to be super religious because we for sure know what's right and, uh, because I'm in my word, then I'll know if that person's poison. I'll know if this is the right thing. I'll know for sure what the right thing to do is. And uh, if you're a real thinking person, sometimes it's very confusing. I'm, yeah. I, like I said, I'm thinking about it all the time. What does it mean to be a good person? I wish I could just not give a shit. And if people are able to not give a shit, I'm at that place in my life almost where... Um, I'm jealous of them. <laughs> we talk about Joe Rogan a lot, and he yeah. just doesn't like, I don't know if he's smart or if he's dumb to think that I just can't change this. I don't know what that is. Um, yeah, the confusing part about Joe Rogan is that he goes by, he he has a fact checker on site at all times. But then at the same time, he's talking shit about people that are publishers in publications. So he's going by the word of people that he hates, you know? Uh, what do you mean when you say that? Say that again. So he has Jamie on the computer at all times checking things. Yes. But then he'll turn around and shit on all journalists, you know? Well, they are they are just... I, I don't think he shits on all journalists. He he does have people he trusts. Well, the state of journalism. Yes. And the state of... Yeah. that. But but there, you could also look at just like basic facts on certain things as but well. But when you look at the mountain as opposed to the steps you're taking, you look at the fact that all journalism is fucked. So... But not... But I, I don't think they would say all journalism is fucked. Yeah. I don't think they would say that. But then when you go down to it, it's personalities. Like Matt Taibbi is a person and people are fallible, you know? Yes. Um, I don't know. It's like a weird argument to have. It, it, and it is kind of like self-righteous to just hate on CNN or just hate on specific people that you have a beef with, you know? Well, if, you know, you and I talk about this stuff all the time yeah. off the thing. But <laughs> yeah. when you are taking in information now, things have gotten so biased in a lot of ways that you have to take in various news sources and try, and this is also, I think, part of being a good citizen and part of being an adult, is taking in a bunch of different news sources so that you can kind of figure out what the truth is. Yeah. Um, because a lot of our media is, uh, just like our government, is ran by corporations. Mm -hmm. So you can't trust one person. Did you listen to that doctor, that uh, the doctor he had on recently, Joe Rogan? Yeah, Peter McCullough. Yeah. Yeah. So I listened to that, and... Um, there were different times where I'm like, okay, I'm listening. And I'm like, this makes sense. But then my spidey sense would go off. Like mm -hmm. he'd say a thing and I'd be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> and so you're, that's how you're supposed to listen to any kind of thing. Yeah. And then be like, wait, what? What is that? That's weird. At minute 35, he started talking about this global conspiracy. And it's like, wait, what are you talking? Different things like that would pop up. To that, go back to what Chase said, yes, you're confused rather than for sure. You know what I mean? Well, yeah, I mean, like what, what, huh? Well, people who just listen to things without questioning them. Yes. Well, people that follow God without questioning. There's no contradictions yeah, follow to the God Bible. God or Dave Chappelle or Joe Rogan yeah. without questioning these things. Um, yes, absolutely. They're they're making a mistake. So maybe I do agree with Chase. Maybe yeah. I am going to buy their <laughs> Netflix special.
Wow. No, but, uh, <laughs> dude, I just, this, this guy, Yavin Chavez from Las Vegas, it just, like, bummed me out to hear that. And he even says, this isn't in the Bible, but the, they, then he does that thing where, yeah, Jesus, the Bible says if you put the word in you, there was no Bible when any of this shit existed. Yeah. If you read your Bible, which this is what my mom believes, you know, sorry, mom, you know, <laughs> but she believes because she reads her Bible so much, these ancient teachings, then... Um, then from these people she doesn't know, then she's going to know uh, what bill to pay. Yeah. Like, no, are you a fucking moron? I Now, granted, though, I do believe, I don't, and I, I'm sure you, you will agree with me, Gerardo, but once you stop drinking, once you clean out a lot of that stuff, you are able to, I feel like, kind of know what better decisions to make, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You found that in your own life, yeah? Yeah, I mean, more so with... The twelve step program. Yes, um, I found a lot of my own shortcomings to be um, kind of like indicators of like how bad my life has gotten. The reasons why it's not so much my drinking, so much as it is myself. Like I can start drinking tomorrow, and those things could just come back. Like there, I don't know if you've ever heard that phrase where it's like every day you're not drinking. Your alcoholism's like in the backyard working out, just yeah, waiting yeah. for you to open the door. <laughs> Damn, man, I've been wanting to drink so bad <laughs> yeah. these past couple of weeks. Yeah. I mean, I just hit my three years. Congrats! Thank you. Um, on December tenth, and uh, I've just been wanting to drink like so bad. Now that doesn't mean I mean the fact that I'm talking to you about. It, I talked to Julia about it. Doesn't mean I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about this desire. Yeah, and I think a lot of that comes from it's just like. Man, am I gonna do this for the rest of my life? Am I just gonna keep not drinking for the yeah. rest of my life? I think that that's. And then Julia had to drop it on me, one day at a time. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to me, the 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 fact it, that you have to do it one day at a time is so like bothersome that you can't let your head get out of control like that. Yeah. So one day at a time, like I'm telling you, my life changed when I went to the twelve step programs. <laughs> Uh, instead of looking at why you're mad at other people, whenever you get mad, you have to look at yourself, basically. Yeah. And then the whole one day at a time thing is not just for drinking. It's like, if I want to start a successful podcast, it's one day at a time. It's like, it's the same thing of looking at the mountain as opposed to the steps, you know, like looking at every step you're taking to get to the top of the mountain, you know? And I've learned all those tenets through sobriety because I would not be in 12 step programs if I didn't get sober. Double negative. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it's so funny. I, I, I do understand that about art and all of that. I I, I mean, I, I've just been thinking about being an artist so much and what that means. And um, that might mean to me, I think when I think about being an artist, that you can't really think about money at all. Mm -hmm. And that bums me out. I had a long conversation last night about that one thing, dude. With whom? With uh, Miguel Gonzalez. Okay. And what, what, did, what, did, what did you guys come to? What conclusion did you come to? We do not see eye to eye with this issue. I went to theater school and do not believe in a safety net whatsoever. Yes. I feel like a safety net is the death of my art in yeah. a way. Because the, and I'm not, okay. And then he, he um, used the imagery of saying that me, uh, my, we have different fuel that fuels our art. But I told him like, I'm not going to the gas station and filling up on like trauma to fucking have good art. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, um, he, what the way he sees it is that if, when he started taking stand up seriously and was looking at it as a career, as, a, as opposed to something that he loves and fell in love with, um, he sees it as, and sorry, Miguel, if you're listening to this, I'm putting your, <laughs> putting your business out there, but he sees it as, um, something that he's not happy about if it's a job, you know? And then, but I see it as I'm happy about it no matter what. Like stand up makes me happy, and when I bomb, it's the funniest thing of all time. Like for the longest time, I never would talk about this one time where I bombed, but it's so fucking funny. Yeah. But it lives in my head, and it hurts so much. But I, I was an all black Christian crowd, and I, I always tell the story about how I say Jesus fuck. Like I said <laughs> Jesus fuck like eight times. I was like a twitch, you know. Yeah. And then, um, but there was a joke that I did in that set. Where I was like, what's with this dance? And then I did a dance and nobody. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> it hurts so much. And then like, it's like somebody just stabbed me on stage. I got off stage and I was like, what the fuck was that? And I'll be driving or showering. You know, like when it's raining, you get that like conscious state of uh, showering. I'll be driving in the rain, just like wincing. Like, what the fuck was I thinking? You know? Yeah. 
But it's hilarious for that to be my moment that always comes back to me. All those things are funny. They're not stressful in my opinion. Uh, and I, I, you know, the same thing with like the mountain and the steps. It's like I don't look at the mountain. I just look at these steps, and if I trip, I laugh about it. You know. Sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you're supposed to do that. But I, I, I do. Let's see. Maybe I do side with Miguel on that. The only thing I worry about is that is am I am I changing these things for an audience? Does that dilute the thing? Or why am I doing this exactly? And I don't. Well, it comes back to another argument we had about direction. Like, I love taking direction. Yeah. Um, one of my best jokes came from my friend Cody Decker. Yeah. Which is Gerardo, Gerardo, ho, ho, French-Mexican joke. Yes. Granted, I added to it and made the, the second punchline, the third punchline to it. But that Gerardo, ho, ho thing, he gave it to me. And I took the direction and then I made it my own and then added to it with different tags. You know, um, but he sees that as like a, a break in my integrity in a sense where I'm able to take direction. Granted, I grew up in theater, like high school theater, college theater. You know, I was a theater major um, and I find direction to be something that I could adapt to. You know, people have like this weird thing in their minds where they think that if I didn't like I know exactly where all my jokes come from, you know. I know to give credit to people if they do well. Yeah. You know, um, I don't see that as breaking my integrity. It's like, I, for whatever reason, I interpret that as if somebody tells me to do something and I do it in my own flavor or whatever, it's probably because they saw it in my voice or they saw it in yeah, my, yeah, my yeah. way. No, I agree with you too. And, and that's why, I mean, it's not like I'll take it from everyone, but if yeah. I respect you and you say a thing and I like let it sit in my heart and I go, oh, that doesn't make sense or it does. It goes back to the interpretation of the art form, in my opinion. You told me before I I do a weird sort like sort of stand up comedy where I don't believe in writing things I don't believe in <clears throat> telling people my jokes before I go on stage because it kind of like fucks me up like if nobody's gonna like my joke off stage but when I get on stage it's the whole like I guess the the spirituality of it where I'm just taken over by like I can't explain the joke while I'm trying to tell it you know I don't know I don't know I, I take direction better than <laughs> better than I guess like. I like I'm even directing myself when I try to write a joke. I, I don't look at it as like I'm gonna write this thing out. You know, I'm I'm basically saying I got this and I want to end on this punchline. I have to find the way to get there. But yeah. I know that it'll end strongly. Oh, you mean you take input, not just direction. Yes. You'll take input from other people. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um But having a safety net too. That's like it's just like so um it's it's like it will it would kill me if I did that. To have a safety net? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, I mean what do you mean when you say safety net, though? I'm going to work on this to get money in order to do stand-up, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you have a job. You have other jobs, too, when you have to do uh, deliveries and stuff, right? True, but I'm listening to podcasts the whole time. It's like there's a focus on the goal. I And I told them, too, yeah, th these are things that add to the, the frustration that is my persona like i have i've had so many nervous breakdowns as a kid you know and it caused me to have this vo boisterous voice you know i took voice class had to identify with those things when i was in college i took four years of voice um and so like knowing that that's where my voice comes from i don't speak from the stomach when i'm yelling i speak from my throat because i'm so scared you know hmm. so uh knowing those things and controlling them you know because the, the whole reason why we had this conversation was because he's so quiet on stage yeah and i told him like you're never like that's not stand-up that's a, some kind of different art form you should make a <laughs> video of yourself doing jokes and you could whisper them like but in front of an audience nobody wants to hear silence i don't understand silence as an object in a joke you silence know? works what are you talking about when that's like your main, your main lining silence, you know? I mean, well, there are comics that do that. True. I but mean, Mitch Hedberg does So that. I told him, I said, you know, when you get to a certain point, they will accommodate you with the mic, with the amplifiers to make this happen because you're so fucking funny. Yeah. You know, uh, I just don't see that happening in 2021 as an open micer, you know? That's an interesting, that's an interesting argument. Yeah. Um, anyway, I just said a bunch of stuff. I'm sorry for confusing That's okay. Me. No, that's yeah. okay. We're talking. We're having a conversation. <laughs> We're just talking. We don't have a guest. We're just talking. <laughs> yeah. Um, dude, this clip of Matthew McConaughey is so funny. It's a yeah. Christmas clip, but it's also very, it, it's, he reminds me of Dan Reeve in it. Yeah. Um, so Matthew McConaughey, I don't know what he's doing. Actually, we'll talk about him after, but <laughs> let's play this Christmas clip from him. Uh, he just posts these clips now. <laughs> Here goes. This Christmas, what I'm mostly looking forward to is that wonderment in my children's eyes. Christmas Eve, the anticipation of tomorrow morning, not wanting to go to bed, but finally getting to sleep. Waking up before sunrise, 
coming to our bed. Get up, get up, Santa came. And we're like, can you please give us 30 more minutes? Of course we can't, we gotta go down. Who ate the cookie? Who drank the milk? <laughs> Who brought these gifts under Santa's the tree? Santa Claus right right came. That wonderment, that anticipation is even more exciting to me than the pleasure they get from actually opening the gifts. And on this Christmas, let's, you know, let's all enjoy that wonderment by our, by our children because one day, they may not believe in Santa Claus. Damn and right. uh, until <laughs> that day comes, fuck? let's enjoy that they do. <laughs> I feel like he lost faith in what he was saying halfway through. <laughs> well, it's about, you know, enjoying the time where your kids believe in Santa Claus. And he's like, let's really appreciate this time right here. Come get it. I can't. No, you can. Yes, you can. It's very Dan Ray. Matthew McConaughey, it like, started to become uh, he has an autobiography yeah that uh <laughs> i encourage everyone if, if you're into audiobooks especially from stars to to read the matthew mcconaughey book because he's like so full of shit it's like full of poetry too but it's like a thing that works for him like a southern thing he almost ran for governor of texas <laughs> i mean he believes in himself this much he's not lying he's just a dumb guy where it's just all worked out for him. If you read his autobiography, you realize, uh, he, I think he is a good guy, but he's it's just all worked out for him. So like everything just tipped his way and then he thinks that he knows all this wisdom, but he just he's just dumb as rock still. <laughs> Uh, but I love that clip too. It just I kept watching it. I was just like, dude, why are you putting out this video? <laughs> he's not running anymore for the governor. I'm just like, he's like, let's just appreciate the time where our kids do. Are you gonna if you have kids, you're not gonna make them believe in Santa, are you? Um, I don't know. I've thought about this a lot. What is the function of making them believe in Santa? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't like lying to people. I guess like it's to teach them about loss later in life. No, it's a, it's supposed to be like a fun thing for them. Yeah. And I've heard from some people that they're glad that they were taught it. And then some people say, no, I never trusted my parents again after that because they just straight up lied to me. Because when you get to my age, like you romanticize the thought that you used to believe in Santa. Did you used to believe in Santa? So that's why I'm saying like people around me do romanticize that thought. Like yeah. I, I remember when I fucking found out Santa was real or was not real, you know? Yeah. But my grandpa would just dress like Santa every year and it was the funniest thing to me, but I knew it was my grandpa. <laughs> so you never believed in the, the magic of Santa. I, I may have believed in it, but I don't remember the thing that happened that made me not believe in it. It wasn't like a life altering fucking thing. That to me is like some kind of white shit, you know? My fucking nephews, my 10-year-old nephew still believes in it. Yeah. And my 12-year-old nephew, he just, when he turned 12, like before middle school, yeah. my sister like told him basically yeah. or something because she was like, I can't have him going to fucking junior high <laughs> believing in Santa stuff. I think that's like kind of a good parent thing, I guess. Yeah. That's a sign that you're a good parent, but I just, I would never want to lie to my kids. Like there's yeah. so much magic and wonderment in the world besides that bullshit. Yeah. There's no reason to fucking make any up. My little brother got in trouble. I forget if this is true or not, or if it's another person. I, re I remember my little brother getting in trouble for telling the kids that Santa wasn't real. Yeah. He had me and my sister were 13 years older than him. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, Let's read some Bible. What time, what time are we at? Uh, roughly 50. Okay, cool. Let's read some Bible. I love this story. All right, I'm going to read from John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. Now, remember, John is the crazy gospel. So the craziest shit happens in John. They literally are using this to try to, like, convince dumb people that Jesus was, uh, like, God born again. In John, the most magical shit happens. Uh, the craziest shit happens that doesn't happen in any other gospels. This is an example of this. But I do like this story for a couple of different reasons. Um Jesus comes back, supposedly, after he rises from the grave. And he supposedly walked the earth for 90 days after. And there would be different times where he would, like, kind of pop up. And the way the Bible describes it is, like, he would be someone else, and then they would just realize that it was Jesus. So he obviously kind of was, like, fucking with their heads somehow or, like... He was shape-shifting or something like that. This is one of those examples, and I like this story for a few different reasons, but this is um, John chapter 21, verses 1 through 19. The title of this is Jesus Appears to Seven Disciples. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself in this way. Gathered there together were Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, 
uh, we'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat, and uh, but that night they caught nothing. Verse 4 says, Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> it's just some fucking weirdo staring at them, right? They're like, who's the weirdo? Verse 5, Jesus said to them, Children, you have no fish, have you? They answered him, No. He said to them, Cast the net to the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because there were so many fish. Yeah. That disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, this is a funny thing you might not know. Um, this is the book of John, and supposedly uh, he loved John the most. <laughs> <laughs> Did so, John say that? <laughs> this is what he says in the book of John. He'll say in the book of John, the one that Jesus loved the most, and it's him. <laughs> Isn't that so funny? Yeah. Uh, but that's for sure. When he says, you hear the one Jesus loved the most, uh, they're talking about John. Um, uh, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put some he put on some clothes for he was naked. I guess he was just naked. <laughs> <laughs> These fools went fishing naked just together. That's fucking sick. Yeah, and, dude. Uh, he put on some clothes for he was naked and he jumped in the sea. But the other disciples came in from the boat dragging the net full of fish for they were not far from the land, only about 100 yards off. <laughs> When they had gone ashore, they saw a charcoal fire there with fish on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. So now this is kind of pretty cool. I, I like this stuff in a, like a romantic, sweet story way because he hasn't showed himself to Peter yet. Yeah. So you got to remember, and I'm, I'm foreshadowing what I, the story is going to be about right here. The last time Peter saw Jesus, he had denied him three times. You've heard the story, right? Yes. Where he's three different times. People go, wait, you're the guy who's Jesus' best friend. And he's like, I don't know who you're talking about. And then the third time, when he denies his friend, this guy who he loves with his whole heart, Jesus like looks him in the eye. And he's like, ah, I'm like, ah, I just was disloyal to the guy that I've committed my life to. So the last time Peter saw him, was this. Now, Jesus is risen. He's heard from other people, but he hasn't seen him yet. He hasn't met him. That's why he's so fucking stoked. He swims to the shore. Jesus says, come on, bring that fish. They're around the campfire. They're eating. So Simon Peter went aboard, hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now, none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them. And did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Now we're getting to the chunk right now. These last four verses are what I want to get to. <laughs> when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to them, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. <laughs> A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. <laughs> he said to them a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter felt hurt because because he had said to him uh, the third time, do you love me? So it's, it's like basically he just feels so bad because he betrayed him. So Jesus keeps asking him and he's like, come on, fool. Like, <laughs> come on, you know I love you. And then he goes, Lord, you know everything. You know I love you. And Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and go to wherever you wish. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. Verse 19 says, he said this to indicate the kind of death by which you would glorify God. And after this, he said to him, follow me. And that's just because uh, Peter was crucified upside down, they said. Oh. Because he said he wasn't worthy. He told the people... Uh, the Roman government or whatever was going to crucify him, and he said, "I'm not, I'm not worthy to be crucified the same as Jesus." So turn me upside down. Too. Jesus Christ! Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Whoa. <laughs> uh, but I, I just love that story so much. I think it's so sweet and it's so sad, and it, Peter's so guilt ridden. Now, funny thing, and this is true. I thought of these verses once uh, when I was, I used to be, you know, when I was 27, I met my ex, and uh, she was just 20, and. Um, she introduced, uh, I stopped being a pastor when I was 23, but I saw this weird Christian stuff with sex and all this stuff. And my ex really taught me a lot about, about queer stuff and jealousy and all this stuff. I used to be just like a, a jealous Mexican before I met her. But I, I remember 
she told me at one point, I remember I could picture it like yesterday. I, I told her, she told me that she had a threesome with two guys. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm basically Gerardo at this point. So picture, you know, your your girlfriend tells you, oh yeah, this time I had a threesome with two guys. You're just like, <laughs> you know, you're just furious. You know, I remember getting so pissed out, off. Like, how could you do this to me before you met me? Like that. That's yeah. like really what I thought. Like, oh my God, you're just a dumb slut. Like in my head, that's what I was thinking. And I truly, this is so funny because it echoes these verses. You, It's a joke that I've said in the past, but I truly like remember like thinking about it and God saying, Steve, would you love two pussies in your face? And yeah. I was like, yes, Lord. <laughs> you know I would love two pussies in my face. And I said, and then God asked me again, Steve, would you love two pussies in your face? And I said, yes, Lord. You know I would love two pussies in my face. <laughs> And then he said, well, then why don't you let her enjoy two dicks in her face? And I remember being like, that's real. <laughs> but I swear to you, that really is what God spoke to me about that. And that's how God like continues to speak to me in terms of jealousy and you know monogamy and all that kind of stuff is let these people, we don't have any right to anyone's body or desires or time. So monogamy believes that you do have the right. When you're with someone, you have the right to, they don't have, they can't desire anyone. They got to run, you got to run things by them and you certainly can't be with anyone else. It's, it's you own the person. And I do believe that that's untrue. Big fallacy. Thank you guys so much. You got anything to say? No, I think it's funny. I, I think it'd be funnier if uh, Jesus wasn't even looking where he pointed. He's like, yeah, there's fucking fish over there, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then they, next thing you know, he's just like the world's best fisherman. Well, I mean, he, he gave them the fish, you know? Yeah. Maybe it's not funny. Sorry. It's not funny, but, you know, that's okay. Everything doesn't have to be funny. It's but, a very gangster move on Jesus' part. Well, that that whole part, I think, is like gangster, too. He didn't, like, murder Peter or anything like yeah. that. But he did obviously know what he was doing. He asked him three times, yeah. too. You know, just like it's a callback to when he <laughs> Peter was said, denied him three times. It is, like, uh, pretty symbolic at that point. And then he does just say, hey, man, I, I mean, which is what we've said before, too. If you really do love God, then fucking serve people, period. Yeah. Um, and none of this bullshit serving like that where you're rich and you're not, like, you don't actually friends with poor people. None of that shit. I'm talking about real servanthood. What about this uh, this uh, Vows Church clip? Ah, we'll play it some other time. We're okay. going long. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. We do love you. Join the Patreon. This is something new I'm going to be doing with putting in my mouth. I'm, of course, going to be uh, interviewing people, uh, other comics and thinkers from across the country that can't be here on the actual show. But I am starting a a food diary, too. (laughs) So I'm going to start. I've got I've got food issues. I've got eating issues. And at the very least, I want to be conscious of what I'm eating. So I want to. I'm going to start keep track of, keeping track of everything I eat, and then I'm going to talk about it on that podcast too. <laughs> a lot of times it'll be just solo me talking about it, but I don't know. I think it's pretty interesting. I always like to know what people eat. I always ask people, "What you have for dinner?" and stuff like that. I think it's such an intimate thing, and so that's going to be a way for me to keep track. And I'm going away next week. The first days I'm doing this. I'm going to be like in a cabin with people, probably scarfing down like cheese and all this crazy shit, but I'm going to keep track. (laughs) So uh, that's going to be the new put it in my mouth. Uh, You can listen to that, a new weekly podcast with the Patreon, as well as Gerardo, uh, go Gerardo, go, go Hardo (laughs) Al Capone. Yes. This week's episode is going to be about the places I lived. And I'm going to tell a story about when somebody caught me having sex in a park, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Never much for public sex myself, but uh, who knows? It was a wild night. Were you drunk? No? Sober? No. (laughs) Not sober? Coke-filled, I think. Oh, God damn. (laughs) Jeez, yeah. Go listen to that. Uh, Subscribe at patreon.com slash read the Bible with me podcast. Uh, Thank you so much for listening. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts, at YouTube, and at Spotify. Please rate us. It helps us shoot up the charts. We love you so much. Thanks for listening. And also Spotify. You can rate on Spotify now. Did you know Oh, no. Rate on Spotify. I think I did see that somewhere. So we'll be back next week. Tune in. We love you. Thank you so much.